You know, a gentleman I've come to really like and respect didn't always work out that way, but who cares? It does now. Is Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly works very hard. Um, he has a wonderful radio program. Uh, he works on these books that are always excellent and superb. He's got a brand new one out today called Killing the Witches, the Hor- Horror of Salem, Massachusetts. I've been to Salem, Massachusetts when I was a little kid. The whole story is frightening. And here's my man, Bill O'Reilly. Bill, how are you, brother? You know, I'm the same, which is a tragedy for everyone, uh, Mark. <laughs> you know, you'd like to see some improvement as you get older, but not with me. Yeah. Um, thanks for reading the book. I appreciate it. Um, it got off to a great start, and now with the Levin audience uh, dialed in, it'll do, uh, it'll do better, I think. The story today that ties directly into Killing the Witches, and I think your audience will be very interested to hear this, is the uh, New York judge who uh, denied Donald Trump summary judgment on this um, civil suit lodged by the Attorney General of New York, Letitia James, saying that Trump overvalued his properties and has to pay a fine for doing it. This is a witch hunt. And part of killing the witches, in the beginning of the book, I tell you what the horrible situation was in Salem in 1692. And people are not going to believe how bad this was, 20 human beings executed for nothing. But we have a, as you know, and you talk about on the air a lot, a contemporary witch hunt. And I'm not Trump's lawyer. That's not what I'm cut out to do here. But in this case, there is no victim Donald Trump borrowed money from banks off his real estate holdings. He told the bank how much he believed the holdings were worth. The bank took that and lent him the money, which Trump paid back in full. There was never a complaint lodged against Donald Trump in New York for his real estate activities. Not one. Yet the attorney general, a Trump hater lodges this to get him. That's a witch hunt. Mm -hmm. And it's not only happening to President Trump, it's happening to you, it's happening to me. Every day we have to deal with the people trying to take us off the map, trying to destroy our careers and families. And there doesn't seem to be any mechanism in America to stop it. So killing the witches, you have to understand the hysteria back in 1692, but it's the same hysteria today. It's just in politics, not in religion. And another more recent example, Bill O'Reilly, is what CNN tried to do to you the other day. Remind the American people what that was. Unbelievable. So on Friday, after Rupert Murdoch resigned his chairmanship of Fox News. CNN went on the air with a montage of sound from the Fox News channel. The goal was to portray the entire operation as racist. In the montage that CNN broadcast in prime time was me, your humble correspondent, for eight seconds saying that slaves were well-fed and had decent housing. That's it. That was the entire statement they used from me, from 2016. You know that, what that was taken from? My defense of Michelle Obama, who gave a speech saying that slaves largely built the White House, which is historically true. And I told my audience on the factor that what Mrs. Obama said is accurate and that the slaves that built the White House were well-fed and housed because they had to work so hard. Mm -hmm. So CNN took it eight seconds to try to demonize me as a racist, telling their audience I was justifying slavery. So my attorneys have written them a letter, a demand letter for an apology, We heard back from their attorneys. But this is not unusual. That's not unusual. Because they get away with it time after time after time. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why this book is so important, because you lay out the history, and really it connects to modern days. You're exactly right. Look at what they've done to the parents. Look at what they're doing to Catholics. Look at what, and then they deny it. They do it and deny it. And you know, Bill O'Reilly, <clears throat> you don't have to be a lawyer for Trump when you look at this. They have brought every conceivable action against this man at every level of government. Am I supposed to believe that's just a coincidence? What do you think? No, of course not. They know they being the progressive left. All this stuff comes out of the progressive left, uh, <clears throat> right? The real militant arm of the Democratic Party. They hate Trump. They want to destroy Trump because they fear Trump. Trump is an avenger. If he wins re-election, he will win because Americans now say we've got to get rid of this progressive stuff and the only guy that's going to do it is trump so this is turned away from policy into personal because it's so dangerous what is going on the media enables all of this so if the media were fair and saying hold it there's hysteria in the cancel culture there you're, you're ruining people's lives on accusations which they are Okay, and you got to stop it. We're a country with a due process. Mm -hmm. So in Salem, Massachusetts, there was no due process. Young girls, 10, 11, 12, could point at an adult and say, that person came to me with Satan and tried to make me a witch. And two weeks later, there'd be a rope around the adult's neck. I mean, that's what we, we you know, people don't know this. It's funny because Salem, Massachusetts has made millions and millions of dollars billing itself as Witch City. If you go up there, it's 25 miles north of Boston. All right, your big sign, welcome to Salem, Witch City. And then they're the, you know, they have a pedestrian mall with witch shops and witches reading your palm or whatever witches do. Okay, now it's harmless, but they're making the money off the backs of these 20 people who are executed in the most hysterical fashion. And here's the kicker that correlates right to today. If you stood up in Salem in, in 1692 and said, this is bull, as a lot of people knew it was, they'd accuse you of being a witch. You'd have a rope around your neck. And if you go against the progressive media today, the New York Times or Washington Post, like I did, they're going to get you. Mm -hmm. Same thing. We're here with Bill O'Reilly. His great new book is Killing the Witches, the Horror of Salem, Massachusetts. It's beautifully written. The way he writes it is he gives the history of this and then, of course, projects it out to what's going on now. Bill O'Reilly, two questions. First of all, how do you think uh, they'll be writing about America in 100 years? Uh, you know, we could go either way here. I think there will be a backlash against the progressives who are trying to uh, destroy the country. Your new book deals with that. Um, and I think most Americans don't want this destruction. I'm praying that I'm right. Um, if the backlash comes, then it will be a blip. Um, but if the progressives were to increase their power, um, then... History it's would over. say this, this is a turning point here. Mm -hmm. When we went from a free society to a government-controlled society. And, um, you know, it's frightening to contemplate if you really step back, take the emotion out of it, and look at what kind of a country that the progressives want. So there was a high school teacher right near you in Virginia, northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. And... She was accused of a sexual impropriety with a student, and she was arrested. The cops went to her house, brought her to jail, charged her based upon only the student's affidavit. And I write about this in Killing the Witches. She was, her whole life, in the blink of an eye, she didn't even know why the police were coming to her house, was ruined. Fired from her job, no due process, 
And then two weeks later, the cops dropped the charges because there was no evidence at all. She sued and won $5 million in less than an hour. The jury returned with the verdict. Mm -hmm. But she told us that, yes, she has the money, she has some security, but her whole life was ruined by this witch hunt. So then I ask you, Mark Levin, what is the difference between that poor young teacher in Northern Virginia and the people in Salem, Massachusetts? They're dead, she's not, but their lives are ruined. And people look at me and they go, oh no, it can't be that bad. It is that bad. 100%, it is that bad. And uh, and the problem is, <clears throat> well, I'm hopeful, but I'm not as hopeful as you necessarily because I. Well, don't I'm coming that, from a history yeah, point of view. Yeah. But you may be right because there's a different factor involved now, and that's the mass media. So up until, and I'm going to break a little news on the Mark Levin show. Is that okay? Absolutely. So tomorrow night at nine o'clock, up against the Republican debate. Tucker Carlson's dropping an hour interview with me. Really? Never happened before. I've known him, but we've never had this. We have one hour conversation. You go to BillOReilly.com, we got a link to it. You just punch a button, boom, you'll be able to see it. It's mm -hmm. really extraordinary. I taped it last night with Carlson. Oh. I'm very pleased that he did it. But we get into the media big time, and he loved killing the witches. He's coming at it from a little bit different point of view. Uh, he was very interested in the de demonic possession stuff we have in the book. But anyway, um, the, the one factor that was not in play in this country was a corporate media that enables the progressive left to destroy tradition. Mm -hmm. That's new. And there doesn't seem to be much pushback against it. Fox News does but not as much as it did. So I think you will be very interested, because you know us both, to hear that hour conversation, which, again, is tomorrow night at 9 o'clock drops, and then people can see it at their leisure. So I'd watch that instead of Chris Christie? You know, I think you can do both. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to do Dexter. both, trust me. What? <laughs> not a Christie fan. This is a great book, America, seriously. Killing the Witches, the Horror of Salem, Massachusetts, which was horrendous the way these people died. Didn't they burn some at the stake, too, Bill? Only in Europe. Another fascinating Europe. thing. So there were thousands of witches burned in Europe, Joan of Arc being the most famous. But in England, the king outlawed the burning of witches because he said it was a religious thing. And after Henry VIII wiped out religion in England, then they deemed witchcraft to be sedition against the crown. But in Scotland, we opened the book with this horrendous burning of this witch up in Scotland. That's how the book opens. But England hanged the witches. And then when the Puritans came to Massachusetts, and we put you on the Mayflower, you know, Levin, you would not have liked those accommodations. No, I don't think so. No, it was. You know, First of all, I get very nauseous on boats, Bill, so there's that. <laughs> we go pilgrims, yeah, Thanksgiving, passes stuffing. Where do you see what happened on that Mayflower? Uh, so, and, and then they get here, and it gets worse. And those are the origins of our country. But anyway, um, the crown didn't burn witches, but all the European countries did. But mm -hmm. because England controlled the New World, they hanged them. The book is a great book. Killing the Witches, The Horror of Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, it's a very comprehensive book, very easy to read. And, uh, and you're on WABC after my program, right? Yeah, that's, and we really appreciate the lead. Number one, I appreciate you having me on to talk about Killing the Witches. But people might not know if they don't live in the New York area that WABC is a powerhouse now. It is the uh, most successful talk radio station in the Northeast. And Levin leads into O'Reilly. And I'm taking a little bit of credit, and I'm sure you are too, for the fantastic ratings on WABC. 
Well, you know, I have to duke it out with the Mets and the Yankees, which is a pain in the ass, but we do the best yeah, but we this can. Year, <laughs> yeah. This year, we were Yeah, relief. they're pretty bad. We were relief from the Mets and That's the Yankees. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. I well, mean, Bill, I want to thank you. This is uh, another fantastic book. You can get it at Amazon.com, any book store, probably any one of the warehouse stores, Killing the Witches, the Horror of Salem, Massachusetts. Take care of yourself, my friend. All right, Mark. Thanks for having me in. I really appreciate it. You bet. Always writes very interesting and compelling books. There's another one. Let's take some calls while we're here. Let us go to Jeff Dundolph, Maryland. Never heard of Dundolph, Maryland on the Mark Levin app. Is there a Dundolph, Maryland? Jeff? Yes, there's a Dundolph, Maryland just outside of Baltimore City. Yeah, but everything's just outside of Baltimore City. That's the tail that wags the dog. But anyway, Jeff, <laughs> how are you, my friend? Uh, well, I, I am great. God bless you, sir. Thank I am you. humbled and honored to be speaking with you. Just want to let you know that I'm on my second go-around of the Democrat Party Hates America on audiobook. Um, Thank you. I bought a copy. I bought a copy. I bought a copy for my pastor because he, he shares a lot of the stuff that you talk about in the book. Yeah. And, well, uh, thank you. I know that my father, I know my father is smiling from heaven. I lost him 10 years ago, but he, he listened to you every day. Oh, And man. Bill O'Reilly at night. Yeah. So, I mean, to talk to you tonight, it just touches my heart. Well, Jeff, that's very, very kind of you, and we're going to send you a signed copy of uh, The Democrat Party Hates America, so don't hang up, and I want to thank you and, and posthumously your father. Um, you know, it, it really touches your heart when you hear people come up to me and say, or people call and they say, my father, my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, they used to listen to your show religiously, they've passed away. I'm going to tell you something. That <clears throat> That is very, it, it's emotional for me. So I want to thank you, folks. Let's keep going. Let's see here. Gary, trucker, uh, in Indiana, I think, XM Satellite. How are you, Gary? Hi. Yeah, I'm good. I'm in Frankfort, Indiana. And I'm looking forward to talking to Mark. You got Mark right here. How are you? Hey, Mark. Uh, man, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank, thank you for taking my call. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. I've been trying to get um, a word in edgewise. I, I listen to you every day. Thank you. And uh, just like that last gentleman there, um, man, you, you, you become a friend of mine. I look forward to you at 5 o'clock Central Time every day. <laughs> you know what? I, I really appreciate that, and I feel with this audience, I do have a bond and vice versa. Everything I do is for the audience. Everything I write is for the audience. It's not for me. I don't write books about me. I try and, you know, I just know there's, there's tens of millions of us who do love this country, our family, our history, and that I feel you need a voice, and I can vent. And I don't mean just vent. But I mean, give us the evidence, give us the facts, give us the information to make our case. Because people listen to this show all over the country, all over the world. You'd be stunned. I'm stunned. The, the number of people who listen, the variety and diversity of backgrounds and geography and what people do and other people, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. So, of course, I have some people who disagree, and that's okay. As long as we're on the same sheet of music with respect to the end game, which is there are enemies, there are evil people, there are evil institutions, and this now and then, we got to play team football against these people. And so that's my view, and why I spend all these weekends and nights and early mornings writing these books. I don't do it for my health. I don't do it for my ego. I do it to try and get the word out to you folks so you can get the word out to other people. And I want to thank you, Gary. Do not hang up. I want to send you a signed copy of The Democrat Party Hates America as well. And I'm very thankful 
for truckers like you out there. God bless you, my friend.